Hey, I want to take a minute and show you my electric fence. Uh, I have this electric netting here. There are, let's see, 210 paces times three. It takes me 210 paces to walk around at about a yard for each one. There's about 600 feet of fence here. I have a Parmac charger here. It's a 12 volt charger, a Magnum 12. There's a version that's about $30 more. This is about a $100 charger. There's a version that's about $30 more that's a little bigger. This has um, a little meter on it that shows the voltage. And I also have another tool I can use to measure the voltage. Um, you hook up the red, the positive, the, the charger's off right now, so you don't need to worry. The red, the positive, I hook up to the fence. The black, the ground, I hook up with a uh, wire to a rod that I drove, sorry for the shadow here, to a rod that I drove into the ground. Uh, depending on your soil, you're going to need to go at least three feet. A lot of people go six feet. Some people put in multiple rods. So there's actually no ground hooked to the fence. The fence grounds, it's charged with a positive. Um, it's char the fence is charged with a positive uh, wire. You can see here, I just clipped it on to the fence. I don't have to have the ends of the fence connected because it grounds through the soil. Comes back to this ground rod. Uh, mine is a 12 volt system. A lot of systems are 110 volts. I like this because I don't have to run an extension cord outside. This battery is a deep cycle battery. Uh, it does not take this big of a battery. These chargers pull very little juice. So I got uh, the bigger battery and I have a handle on it, which I really like because that way I can move it and this fence does get moved regularly. And every month or two I'll take the battery in and charge it. When this fence is charged and working properly, it will send out a 12,000 volt, or a 10,000 volt, I'm sorry, charge 40 times a minute. But it's an extremely short spark. So you will really feel it, but it's relatively safe. I'm not saying that accidents can't happen, particularly when things get stuck in it. But I have had chickens get stuck in the fence before that were somewhat the worst for the wear, but they survived. It's actually safer to keep the voltage up. That keeps stuff out of it better and from getting stuck in it. As the weeds start growing up into this, you will have the voltage start to drop. If one of the wires touches um, like a fence post or metal, you can have a dead short where you really get no power through the fence. So when the voltage starts to get down around two or 3,000 volts, usually it's time to move the fence or adjust the fence uh, so that it will, uh, the voltage won't drop too low. This is a great system. I love this electric netting. The chickens do get into it sometimes. Uh, you'll see them hit it and fly away. It's generally recommended that these be left on all the time. I don't leave mine on a lot during the day because I have a two-year-old and I don't want him to get in it. So when he's out playing, I turn the fence off. But the chickens don't know it's off. This charger is about a hundred bucks. The battery is close to a hundred bucks. The fencing is somewhere around a dollar a foot. I buy mine from Premier One Supplies in Iowa. I like them. They've always treated me right. There are other sources to get it to. There are actually two styles of this fence. I have, well, there are more than two styles, but there's two styles that look like this for poultry netting. Uh, there's one that has the poles about seven and a half feet apart approximately. Uh, it comes in 100 foot lengths and there's one that has the poles 10 feet apart. It comes I believe in 160 roughly, 160 foot lengths. I like the one with the 
close closer together because the fence sags less. I don't care about the fence sagging on the top, but on the bottom, if it sags, then it gets into the ground. And because my ground is uneven, the, having the post closer together helps me keep the bottom wire up out of the dirt, uh, out of the grass, and it helps me keep the voltage up so I can run a longer fence with less power. The other thing is that when you wrap it up, because of the way you have to drape it and wrap it up, the fence with the posts that are closer together is a lot easier to handle by yourself. Uh, how do I explain this? I'm about six feet tall and I have long arms and I have trouble with a fence with the posts that are farther apart uh, because it drapes down and it's easy to step on it so you kind of have to hold it up while you wrap it up. And maybe there's better techniques for those of you that are shorter but the way I do it, it's a little bit of a struggle and I find with the posts that are closer together it's a lot easier and if you're shorter uh, that would be even more true. This has been Luke Townsley. If you like this video, you can help me by leaving a comment or even just click the thumbs up on YouTube.